I know that the vast majority of you are not Eric Bischoff fans. I've stated a few times recently that I am. I very much enjoy listening to his podcast for his views, his takes, um, his experience on things. Those are the kind of podcasters I just enjoy. Not so much like the Mark podcasters who think everything is good and talking about work rate and all that shit. Like I enjoy his view on creative and television and all that shit. So he recently had Ann Evans on his new show. There's a it's a new live show he has, a live stream called Wise Wise Choices. I think that's the name of it anyway. Um he had Ann Evans on there. If you don't remember that name and and many of you probably do. He was with Impact for several years. They brought him in. He used to work um on the I believe on the social media side, but definitely like on the YouTube side of UFC. And then they brought him in to Impact to help with YouTube and he helped turn it into a seven figure a year uh, venture. And I knew they were, I, I'd said a few times on my podcast that I knew they were making about a million a year on YouTube because I had some access to numbers that were showing me that. And um, I'll, I'll get into YouTube a little deeper here in a second because I've always said it was a missed opportunity. Like I don't, I don't doubt that I've never doubted that it wasn't bringing in revenue. You know, I just thought it's been a miss a missed opportunity for what they could really truly do with it. But anyway, Ann Evans is on there and um, he said he's very close to Scott Demore. And the whole interview was about, because he's an expert, was about AEW's YouTube channel pretty much being the shits. And he was actually saying that the Impact YouTube channel for what it is uh, performs better, which is very, very interesting. But, um, he, you know, he, there's a few things he kind of said in, in in passing a little bit. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't it wasn't um, things he was really focused on. But as he was talking about AEW, their YouTube, his experiences with things, he was throwing in little um, uh, little little bits and pieces about his time in TNA. And he had said that, you know, he was very good friends with Scott Demore and that. He actually thinks this new ownership group, or uh, not uh, management group, I should say, is going to run the company into the ground. He said that pretty confidently, which is not a good thing. But he did state that if you, well, let's rewind here a little bit. You remember there was a rumor that came out that TNA or Anthem, whatever, whatever they're saying, they were saying Impact or Anthem wanted to buy Ring of Honor. And that was a rumor that floated around a little bit. And then, you know, Scott Demore's tweet came out saying, oh, at one point there was a rumor that I wanted to buy Ring of Honor and completely, completely blew it off, right? Well, Ann Evans says in this interview that at the time that Ring of Honor was going under, that Scott Demore was inquiring about purchasing Ring of Honor. He said it was just due to, at the time, the YouTube channel. When I say Scott Demore, I don't believe it was him personally. I think it was the Anthem Umbrella. But Ant said at the time, the Impact YouTube channel was doing so well that, you know, they're kind of like, hey, can we use this, what we're making here, to, um, to go towards the purchase of Ring of Honor. But what he was stating was that he had no interest in, in operating it as a second show. He was trying to purchase the library. So that's where the rumor looks like it came out. And the reason I really put stock in it and I believe him is because this was not an uh, impact interview. And he stated that he was good friends with Scott. So I don't think he was like trying to put incorrect information out into the universe. But it kind of it kind of goes back to when that rumor came out where it said, hey, you know, TNA wants to buy. I'm throwing all sorts of names, Impact, TNA, Anthem, Scott Demore. The general umbrella, you understand what I'm saying, wanted to purchase Ring of Honor, and then Scott came out and debunked that, like, what, what is this crazy rumor that came out? But now we're kind of tying these pieces together a little bit, and it wasn't that they wanted to just buy the company and run the company. It was he was trying to get a hold of the library uh, because you know that Impact – historically has put a lot more weight on their library than really frankly than WWE has in my opinion 
uh, because WWE is a little more forward thinking to where, you know, the good people at Impact know that, hey, our glory years were behind us. So we want to still try to monetize those, monetize those days. So, you know, they were just looking to add to the library. So I just I just found that really interesting that there was some some truth to that. Now, he was talking about their YouTube channel. And again, I just love listening to this kind of shit. Absolutely love it. And he was saying that he had to, when he was running the Impact YouTube channel, had to take them out of the India market. Uh, I think he was saying one or two out of every three videos, he had to basically block uh, from the Indi- from the Indian audience. And the, the reason for that is because when it comes to YouTube monetization, monetization and ad revenue, the money is in the U.S. He didn't say this. I'm telling you this. The money is in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. That's where you want your your views to be to maximize your earning potential. Uh, there's there's several com- uh, me, companies, several countries, India being one of them, where you get peanuts for your views, and you can get thousands and thousands of views and make ten dollars, and um. It's it just do like to the obvious size of the country. It's not a, a knock on the people. Obviously, that's why I've I've got on my podcast before and I've said you you cannot monetize India. What I mean by that is like you saw WWE do that with Jinder Mahal because they said, oh my god, we have all these subscribers from India, and they tried to you know to 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 monetize India. They say, hey, we got all these. People, we can just get them to watch all the social clips. How much more, more money are we going to make? Um, and and I think I feel that Impact did the same over the years with uh, Shira, with the uh, Desi Hit Squad, with uh, Boopy, aka Bupinder Gujar. And now, if you look at, um, you know, like Champagne Singh and um, and and obviously Ro- Rohit Raju. I know I said the Desi Hit Squad, but you know him as a singles wrestler at one point. You saw the way his character progressed towards the end, and then obviously the way the the, the progression of uh, of Shira of turning Raj Singh the Champagne Singh like that's around the time I think they started coming to reality because you had a guy like this letting you know like hey you can't you can't create your content to try to get India to you know to try to get the Indian views because the revenue is not going to be there like you want to appeal to the the U.S. audience, you know, that's that's just where the clicks mean something. So I'm not, I probably didn't explain that all very, very well, because I'm kind of going off the top of my head, not kind of <laughs> any notes or anything. But I hope you guys kind of understand where I was going with it. So they had to he was explaining that he had to uh, limit the. The notifications and things of that nature from the Indian audience, because the way the al- algorithm works is that it's always going to try to pitch your content to the demographic that watches it the most. And when you've got, you know, billions of people over there and they're watching the content, then that's who they're going to start pumping the notifications out to. But the revenue is not there. And he, he stated something kind of, kind of very interesting. And I know I have an Indian audience here as well, so I hope that no one is taking anything I say negatively because that's not what I'm not what I'm going for. But he was saying that I guess like pornography is illegal out there. So, you know, as a softer form of that, women's wrestling is more popular. And again, that is not some like negative thing I'm I'm trying to point out. It's just that. <laughs> when you make one thing illegal, you start, okay, what's the next best thing? I'm not saying women's wrestling is the next best thing, but it's, you know, as you, as you go down the ladder, it, you're going to cross that at some point. So, you know, those, those kind of videos were getting a lot of views, getting a lot of hits, but the revenue was not there. And, you know, he was stating that, and I, I, I kind of know these things because I've done like consulting over with people's YouTube channels over the years. People are very interested in the numbers of subscribers, of views, 
those those are what's called vanity metrics and not the quality of the actual views. So when you guys have heard me for years talk about empty clicks, when I've been upset about the way they do their social media, the way that they do their YouTube, where I'm like, they're, they're just trying to get clicks and views. Like they don't care where they come from. The reason I say that is the algorithm. Because if you get all these people to sign up because you're posting AJ Styles nonstop, well, then you start you start to pump out content about like, well, here's what we're doing currently. And the views aren't there because you're not you're no longer sending the notifications and pumping the content out to the people who really care. Uh, you're you're pumping them to guys who are just clicking because of, you know, certain videos. That's why it's always important with a YouTube channel that you focus on your targeted audience. Like you see that it's very rare that I travel outside the realm of TNA on my channel. I do NWA a little bit because I like this comp company and I want to, but you don't see me, hey, let's cover every single possible news story that comes out um, from every single possible company because that hurts you in the al algorithm the more broad you are. So I've had a very targeted niche and that's why I've been able to build the channel in the way that I have. I don't, uh, do I do content sometimes that's, that's reaching a little bit for that new person? Yes, I am. But I'm not going in complete left field. What I do is still a representation of the core and the basis of my channel. Um, so that's why, you know, that's why I say that the, the impact the YouTube channel has been a missed opportunity because I just think there's more engaging content that they could do and stuff that like the, the Jonathan Gresham video that came out on Twitter today. I don't know if they put that on their YouTube or not, but they typically don't put those kind of things out. They do really well on social media. You know, I think it should go on YouTube as well. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I think they should just make more of an effort to get subscribers based on the current product than based on the past, because you start building a subscriber base based on the past. That's going to kill you in the algorithm. And, you know, the YouTube channel impacts YouTube channel actually grows by like 3000 people a day. Um, it's hard to see that now, but again, I, I just had access to, to these numbers for a while. I could probably still pull them up if I really wanted to. I just haven't tried but it grew consistently by 3000 people a day. That's why when, like when I started the YouTube channel, I think they had 2 million subscribers and what are they at now? Like four, 4 million or 5 million. But does that make any sense? Because the, the viewership is, is going down. It's not growing by any stretch. And it's because they're just doing too much content that is not uh, aimed at the, the core fan base. It's aimed at uh, people outside of the, you know, the main countries that you want to target for ad revenue. It's, it's, it's aimed at lapsed fans who don't watch anymore, but you're trying to, Hey, don't, you remember we have this guy here and this girl there. They have aimed it at those people so much that it's, um, you know, it, it just, the channel doesn't perform as well as it really should, as it really could, but it's grown so big at this point that you can't, you can't fix it to be honest. Uh, that's why I haven't even really been, Harping on it like I used to, because I used to really go off about their YouTube, but it's it's gotten so big at this point, so many, so many subs and so many empty subscribers that it's unfixable. But as long as it's bringing in a million dollars a year, then all good. You know, why not just keep doing what you're doing at this point? So a little bit of rambling on my end, but uh, it's kind of it was cool for me to just kind of listen to it, get a little bit of validation of what I believe to be true in regards to uh, YouTube, but they did, he did say that their, their YouTube channel relatively operates better than AWs. So I guess AW is a way they've done their content as a complete mess. <laughs> so um, TNA is actually ahead of the ball when it comes to, comes to YouTube in comparison to them. Uh, so that's it for you guys. I was just um, found that very interesting that, you know, Scott was inquiring about Ring of Honor at one point and and, you know, they probably could have done good things with that library better than what AEW and what Tony Khan has done with it. You know, they could have found it a way to factor it into TNA plus and to YouTube because that's they like libraries and they it, it probably could have 
increase their revenue pretty substantially. So it would, it probably would have been a better venture for Anthem to get a hold of ROH than it than for Tony Khan. And um, Ant, Ant Evans was also saying that Ring of Honor should be a, a YouTube show. He was saying don't. So I, I see a lot of TNA fans like they should just put Impact on Impact Plus or YouTube and not not TV. And he was saying YouTube is not a replacement for television. Like you want to have both. You want the revenue, the income stream from both. And I, I don't know that they make money off their television deal, but you know he was stating that, which makes perfect sense. But he was saying Ring of Honor should actually be a YouTube show, and you use the television AEW show to promote the YouTube channel, and you use the ROH YouTube channel to promote what you're doing on AEW television. Like you kind of kind of flip it around. So I don't know. All very interesting stuff, but you know, definitely a podcast worth listening to. Um, and I don't want to ramble any further here. So thanks for checking me out. As always, guys, I'm your boy BQ and I'm out. Peace.